HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Hopkinton Police received training on working with the autistic community. NBC Channel 7 investigative reporter and book writer Hank Phillippe Ryan gave a presentation at the Hopkinton Library. Head coach of the Hillers softball team, Dennis Baker Jr. talks playoffs. And the Girl Scouts of Troop 65040 talk about the African water crisis. But first, after a fire at Carboni's last month forced the restaurant to close to renovate and repair, the restaurant reopened for business about four weeks later. After a fire in early May caused Carboni's to close for a month, they reopened. The restaurant has been open since 1933 and is family owned. Current owners, Peter Carboni and Marianne Lorenzen, were thrilled that they were able to open their doors once again after renovations and inspections were complete. Feels great. Uh, it's a lot of work and uh, feels great to be open. Feels great to be open. Very excited. Can't wait to see all our customers. So happy they're all coming back. Two ginger ales? And uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, what, graduation tonight? Graduation, graduation tonight. tonight. Hopefully, we'll uh, did you see the specials? I pick up some local know. people and uh, it's good. That won't be make it all worthwhile for us. Yeah. The Carbonis explained that the process was long and it took a lot of work to get the restaurant ready to reopen. Just about a month. Uh, month and a few days. It was a days. month on uh, le past this past Monday. So it's, yeah, it was like a four week uh, process of totally stripping out the restaurant. Uh, you know, from from the ceiling down. tiles, insulation down to the uh, down to the carpet, everything everything went. Everything was wiped down. Everything everything was taken out of the restaurant, replaced, and or cleaned. Glad they were able to successfully reopen Carboni's. The Hopkinton Police recently received training from Sergeant Ryan Roetker of the Southbridge Police Department, and working with autistic individuals. The sergeant has first-hand experience, as his daughter also has autism. Our instructors here, the only way we can teach for Alec uh, is that we have a family member on the spectrum. That little girl there is my daughter, Sophia. She's six years old. She's got Rett syndrome, severely, severely disabled. She needs 24-hour care. She's nonverbal. Even at age six, she's got scoliosis already. She will walk, but only with assistance. So uh, what are you teaching here today? Uh, we're teaching uh, autism uh, awareness here. It's primarily geared for law enforcement, first responders, uh, primarily police. Police is who I teach. But we do have instructors that teach firefighters. Uh, we have branched out to uh, um, teachers and other uh, community leaders. So that's basically the idea of the course here is uh, autism awareness. Um, and j just to, to think outside the box or maybe a secondary approach to what's typically done. Uh, with this population. And uh, what, what will uh, some of these officers be learning? Well, they'll, they'll primarily uh, learn a, a multitude of things. Uh, what one of the parents had just suggested here that the leading cause of death in the autism community is drowning. So we want officers to be aware of that. So if there's a wandering child or adult that's missing, uh, that'll be the first primary focus they're going to head to. Uh, we talk about uh, ways of properly restraining, ways of, of properly blocking uh, the child or adult so that they don't run into traffic, uh, building a rapport, what signs to look for, uh, clearly on the police end, alternatives to lock up, uh, arrest is, is the last option here. Um, there's a lot of other productive options that are out there other than arrest. Okay. So that's the basis for the course here. Who, who else can benefit from uh, autism awareness training of oh, any kind? Anybody. Um, parents, but generally your parents are your most uh, educated and aware because they deal with it on a 24-7 basis. Police, fire, school teachers, uh, nurses, uh, mental health providers that, ha that don't have any formalized training, 
at all uh, with the autism population. Um, and, you know, any standard civilian that is not who I recommended in the previous category. It's just an overall education that will help everybody in general. So, as an example, might be a neighbor. So, um, you know, I'm hypothetically a neighbor to an autistic child or adult. This would benefit me. So if the adult or child were to get out or wander, I as a neighbor might have some options here to contact the family or help, uh, you know, assist the family as I could. So really this is open for anybody, but primarily geared for me as a cop to teach other cops, and that's, that's kind of why I'm here. We want to be paired in the event we do have a situation. Um, part of the training is we had an autism day um, last week where we met with the kids at the station. We had a um, little petting pony, a bouncy house. We did station tours just to meet the kids, meet the families in town. In the event we do have to respond to the home, we're better prepared. And this training today will help build on that. So we have a partnership with the um, autism, Hopkins and Autism Parents Connection in town. is a great partnership that we just developed. And it's just going to be everybody working together in the event we do have a situation. Today's training is to help the police department have more familiarity with autism syndrome because the intersection with children with autism and the police department can often be fraught with danger for both sides. Drowning is a number one cause of death for children with autism and one of the things that we'd like to prevent is a child with autism drowning in our community. So helping the police department become more familiar with that so that they know to look for bodies of water whenever a child with autism goes missing. Last week on HCAM News, we showed you Girl Scout Troop 65040 performing a short play to depict the water crisis in Africa. Statistics show one in eight people throughout the world do not have access to clean water, including many African countries. Because of this, many African people suffer from illness from drinking contaminated water. According to AfricaStories.org, the average North American uses an average of 158.5 gallons of water a day compared to about 3 to 5 gallons a day used by a person in the developing world. After they performed, the Girl Scouts talked further about the crisis. Well, um, where's troop, Girl Scouts Troop 65040? Great. And what level junior. of Girl Scouts? We're, we're our first years of juniors. Great. And will you tell me how you picked this project and a little bit about it? Um, so we, have to, we had to pick a journey, a junior journey. And um, this year we picked Engine of Change. And in order to get this patch, we had to do something to help a need. And we felt that getting clean water in Africa was one of the needs that, we, that needs to be solved. That's, yeah. And uh, do you have anything else to add to that how did you find out about this need um well some people have seen videos in classes and uh there's a lot of videos on the web about how uh, hard it is for africans and i see your poster says global women's initiative water initiative do you want to tell me a little bit about that um yeah they actually um, train women about how to filter and clean water with those pictures there. Um, so they can have cleaner water. There are a lot of other um, um, initiatives that help with that. So. Great. So do you want to tell us a little bit about some things you learned while doing this project? Um, so we learned that um, it's only West Africa that really has a problem with the water. Like earlier, we thought that it was all of Africa, but it's just West Africa. Okay, and um, it's a great poster and there's a lot happening. Can you tell us a little bit about the poster? Well, so um, there's like um, these like um, index cards. They um, tell you like, um, like how you can help, but then um, there's also like pictures, but then like um, something I, re I really like ab about the um, board is um, this. I don't know if, if, if it's a quote, it may be. It says, um, educate a man, you train a person. Educate a woman, you train a nation. I like it because I don't know why. I just do. Very good, Kylie. Erin, do you have anything else to share? Um, well, we... Um, we sort of, we thought that uh, when we watched a couple of the videos that um, 
some of the girls brought in, we thought that it was more, that it was very important and that people should learn about it. And that's, that's sort of what we thought. And um, that's why we did our poster and our skit and stuff to raise awareness. Okay, that's it. Um, Stella, what are some ways that you can save water? Some ways to save water are um, like you can take five minutes for a shower and don't leave the water on when you're washing your hands. All right, you sure? Mm -hmm. All right, you know what? I just had another question now on the, um, on the whole thing. How did you decide or did you guys split up the work? Some people work on the poster, some have bigger parts in the, in the skit. Yeah, some people yeah. that seem to have bigger parts on the poster. They like, I mean, on the skit, worked on the poster. They like planned the design, the layout. Yes. Yeah, some yeah. people didn't really want. Some people didn't really want to be in the skit that much, so then they planned out our poster, and we had we we obviously made them a part of our skit, so that way they didn't feel like left out if all of a sudden they felt like that. But um, what we also did is. What we also did is that we um, each made our own little little cards about how to help. Um, some are what Africans can do, and some are what us Americans can do. And we each designed our little thing, and it was really cool. And um, right here, so it's only Western Africa. It's not the rest of Africa. And I think this picture is kind of cool because it's like the ripple effect. It's like when you educate a woman that all the things that they'll get to do, like they'll get to have, um, go to school and be a, have more time with their family. Okay. So um, we chose a lot of pictures because, um, well, we cut out a lot of things because we didn't have too much room, but we tried to put the things that were most meaningful to us on it. Um, we hope that like other people would learn about this and like care about this like we do. You can see the short play as well as find more information about the problem on our website hcam.tv. Coming up next on HCAM News, Courtney will get you up to date with everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. We caught up with Hiller's softball coach Dennis Baker Jr. to talk playoffs and a well-known investigative reporter and book author visited the Hopkinton Public Library. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Hello, I am Marie Smith, and I am the chairperson of the Hopkinton Women's Club Community Register and Telephone Directory. We hope you have found our little book to be a helpful resource in the past. We are beginning work on the 2016 edition, and we need your help. Every household in Hopkinton receives one of these for free, and we want to make sure you are included. Our residential listings are based on the information we get from Verizon. If you have switched to a different provider, such as Comcast, we may not have your number. If you do not have a landline, we definitely won't have your number. Or maybe you prefer your cell number in our directory. So please take a minute and help us make the directory accurate and useful for everybody. Take a look at the Hopkinton phone book that you have and make any corrections in it. Or if you are new to town, please send us an email before June 30th. We would love to hear from you. Thank you. Welcome back to HCAM News. A well-known investigative reporter for NBC's Channel 7 in Boston and book author Hank Phillippe Ryan visited the Hopkinton Public Library to talk about her career as a reporter and writer as well as introduced her newest release, Truth Be Told. This is about a mortgage banker turned Robin Hood who decides to manipulate mortgage records 
to keep people's homes out of foreclosure. And it's also about a cold case, the Lilac Sunday killing, a murder in the Arnold Arboretum, unsolved from 20 years ago. And it's also about a reporter who makes stuff up. So it's all about truth be told. And when I said truth be told, I thought, ah, oh, there it is, there it is. Agatha award-winning mystery author Hank Philippi Ryan, who also is an investigative reporter on NBC's affiliate Channel 7 in Boston, recently talked about her award-winning latest release, Truth Be Told, at the Hopkinton Public Library. She talked about her experience as a reporter and how she got into writing. The audience also had a chance to ask her questions. Um, I've been a television reporter for 40 years, and I've wired myself with hidden cameras and confronted corrupt politicians and gone undercover in disguise. But I'm here in my second career as a crime fiction author. Starting about 10 years ago, I started writing murder mystery novels. I'm on my seventh one now, which just won the Agatha for Best Mystery of the Year called Truth Be Told. So I'm here tonight in Hopkinton um, talking to other people who love mysteries and love reading and love books. And we're talking about reading and writing and television and the mysteries of television. What influenced me to get into writing, I've always wanted to be a mystery author ever since I was a little girl. I love storytelling and I love mysteries and I love creating puzzles and suspense. So instead I went into investigative reporting. I've been a reporter for many years now. Um, and I learned that it's all about telling a great story with characters who you care about and a problem that needs to be solved. And I started thinking that maybe it would be fun just to make stuff up. You know, what I do for Channel 7 as an investigative reporter, um, I've won 32 Emmys for telling the truth. And I wondered if I could use my imagination to create a brand new world, a brand new story. And that's what I've done in the Jane Ryland thrillers. They take place in Boston and New England about an investigative reporter on the trail of a good story. So they're fun, they're fast paced. If you like Harlan Coben, Lisa Scalini, Tess Gerritsen, they're authentically New England. Um, they're page turning, riveting thrillers. Uh, a Library Journal starred review said, drop everything and binge read, truth be told. Where people can find more information about me. I have a website, hankphilippiryan.com, that has all kinds of great stuff, cool photos, cool videos, all of my events, and all the information about all my books, including the new one, What You See, which comes out October 20th. Hiller's softball recently made school history as they became the first softball team in the record books to go undefeated in the TVL. The Hillers finished 18-0 in the division and 19-1 overall. With the help of a tiebreaker coin flip, they clinched the number one seed for the South Division I bracket in the postseason. Head coach Dennis Baker Jr. talked to HCAM News after the record-setting victory in the final game against Bellingham. All right, I'm here with head coach of the Hockington Hillers softball team, Dennis Baker Jr. Coach, you guys are undefeated in the TVL. How does it feel? It feels great. I'm so proud of the girls, the effort they, you know, not only today, but all year. I'm so confident in this group of girls. And we knew we had a special team coming into the year. Um, you saw us last year, how good we were, a lot of returning players. But uh, you can never count on going undefeated, you know. It, it's Especially just, in this division. Yeah, it's a tough league. It's a tough division. So, you know, Bellingham, Norton, Medfield's a good team. So, uh, it, it's something that I haven't seen happen in a while. Bellingham was state champions last year. They didn't make it through the Tri-Valley League undefeated. So it's an unbelievable accomplishment, and it's really it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I've been coaching for 15 years in this league, and I've never been a part of a league that's even had an undefeated team before. So for the girls to do that, uh, I'm just so proud of them, and I'm so happy for them. Now, we have to go back in the archives, but this could be the first time in TVL history. We're not quite sure on that. That's something we're going to research. Uh, but this is a, a rare accomplishment. It's something that you mentioned that your dad hasn't even done. He's won the state championship but hasn't done this. So is there going to be a little uh, bragging going on? Well, I, I, I think a little bit. I can't help but be proud of what we did. And I, I think, you know, although he's probably disappointed today, he would have liked to have spoiled it. I'm sure he's proud of what we have done. But... Um, you know, it really is. It's almost like a state championship in a way. It's something that happens so rarely. So um, I'm going to have to brag a little bit about it, I think. But I'm going to give all the credit to the girls, of course. 
Oh, absolutely. Now, Juliet Hume gave up a home run in the first inning. It was one of the most rarest things you'll ever see. When that happened, what, what were you thinking there? Well, it was, it was a shock. Uh, we've rarely seen a hard hit ball against Juliet this year, never mind the number two batter taking her deep. And I'd be lying if I didn't say in the back of my head, oh, is today the day that maybe she just doesn't have it? Or maybe winning the league the other day, we all kind of exhale and let down a little bit. So I had that a little bit in my head, um, just in the back, the very, very back. Um, but she, I, I think it kind of woke her up a little bit. I, th I think it did. Uh, I think after that, the second, she got stronger as the game went on today. Second, third inning, that same girl had a rocket single, maybe again in the third, and I think that was pretty much it for them for the day. Um, she really focused after that and pitched a tremendous ball game. So, um, you know, it, it was one of those things that I think she used it to her advantage today, giving up a home run early to kind of refocus her. Yeah, it was only uh, two hits she gave up, and she does seem to get stronger a lot as the game's going on. Maybe struggle a little bit in the early innings, throw more balls than that, but get better as the game uh, went on. But then she had 14 strikeouts. Can you just talk about her performance all season long? Uh, certainly has to be one of the most dominant pitchers that you've seen really maybe even in the state in a while. Uh, she, she's been the best pitcher I've seen. Uh, and I remember having an interview with you. We talked over on Fruit Street on a cold rain, you know, a cold day with three feet of snow surrounding us. And, and I said that she was capable of doing some special things. I don't know if we expected that it would be this special, but I mean, her stats are just mind blowing. Uh, this is only the second earned run she's given up in, I think, 70 innings this year. Um, she averages maybe one hit every three or four innings. Uh, her control has been great even though she works deep into a lot of counts she doesn't walk a lot of hitters um, so so she's she's pitching some pressure situations too with runners on runners in scoring position late in the game and she just has this focus about her this I, I feel better when I look out on the mound and I see the focus in her eyes um, it calms me down a little bit so I'm really happy that she's able to do that and she's had this coming for a long time she's been a great pitcher and not a lot of people have realized how good she is so for her to do this her senior year um, I'm so proud and I'm so happy for her. Well you must be anxious for the playoff seedings to come out any idea where you'll be obviously you'll be at home but against I, I don't know yet. I believe we're going to be a number one or a number two seed at 19-1. and one. It, It's a very strong bracket, Division One South. It's the best softball in the state. There's 10 teams, us included. I think any one of the 10 teams could win a South sectional. And, um, you know, it's going to be a great challenge, but we're really looking forward to it. I think we got a lot of experience last year um, from making a deep state tournament run, and I think we're going to rely on that experience. Uh, we are going to enjoy this for a little while. The Absolutely. seedings come out Monday, so let's, I said, we'll enjoy it tomorrow, maybe give ourselves the weekend, and then once we find out where we're going to play or who we're going to play on Monday, we'll kind of refocus and put this behind us. Well, you guys certainly deserve to have a little bit of enjoyment. What a tremendous season. Congratulations uh, to you and the team, and we hope that there are many more playoff games to come. Thank you very much. You can see Hiller's softball airing on HCAM Ed and see all the HCAM game broadcasts and highlights on our YouTube page or website, hcam.tv. For all Hiller's playoff information, be sure to head over to our website. For everything else, Coming up on our HCAM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney Taylor, with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Monday, June 15th at 7 p.m., the Elementary School Building Committee will host their latest public forum live on HCAM TV. A live Elementary School Building Committee meeting will follow at 8.30 p.m. On Thursday, June 18th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. All live meetings and events airing on HCAM TV can also be viewed on our live stream at hcam.tv slash live. On a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, on Friday, June 19th at 6.30 p.m., Camille Breeze and Kenny Seltzer perform a blend of traditional and original songs inspired by real-life happenings. Carlos Molina was a father of nine who had worked at the mine until the mine had shut down. Well, Carlos had a secret and it burned at his soul of a tomb on a hillside full of textiles and gold.
On HCAM Ed, we bring you Center School Flag Day, where students celebrated our country with their annual Flag Day ceremony. If you know someone who wants to be on the HCAM Insider mailing list, just have them send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. If you do receive the HCAM Insider, then please pass it along and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and go Hillers.